got yourself a cheap Windows PC because you can't get a hold of a Raspberry Pi and now you just want to get Home Assistant supervised working but you don't know where to turn. In this video I'm going to walk you through how to get Home Assistant supervised up and running on a Windows machine so you can start getting your home automation journey started. Hi I'm Phil GB and this is SMLP Tech. Few things before we get into it. You're going to need a PC running Windows. In my example here I'm using Windows 10 but Windows 11 is also fine. You're going to need to be online and connected to your home network. You're also going to need to make sure that visualization has been set up in the computer's BIOS settings. Everything shown on screen has been sped up to keep the video as short and as to the point as I can. Now let's get into it. The first step is to download the tools we're going to need to get this done. We need to download the Debian Linux operating system, download an app for Windows called VirtualBox, and a Microsoft add-on called Visual C++ that basically makes VirtualBox work. When downloading, you need the Windows host for VirtualBox, and for Visual C++ you need to make sure that you're downloading the correct version for your computer. Don't panic about this, and if you're not sure which one it is, download them all and only the correct one will work. No drama. To get to this video you've probably been searching around trying to work out how to get Home Assistant Supervised running on Windows and everybody's been saying that you can't. And basically they're right, you can't, it just doesn't work, however you can get it running on Linux. That's basically what these apps are going to do. It's going to create a Linux virtual machine inside of Windows and Home Assistant Supervised will run quite happily on there. Once you've got everything downloaded, we're going to start by installing Visual C++, then we're going to install VirtualBox with all the default settings. The next step is to install Debian. Once VirtualBox is open, select New, give your new virtual machine a name, I've called mine Home Assistant. Then in the ISO image, select the Debian operating system that you downloaded before. Confirm that. Make sure you click skip unattended installation as we are going to make some changes while we install. Set your memory and your processor. My best advice at this is at least 4GB of RAM and as many cores as you can. As far as the hard disk size you want to set this to a decent number. I've set mine to 32GB but ideally you want this to be 120 gig. Go into the settings, go into network and change the network settings to bridge adapter. Then click start. We're now going to install Debian. You can choose graphical install or install, doesn't really matter. Choose your language, choose your country, choose your keyboard and then it will start to install. This obviously takes quite some time and it's clearly sped up here. My computer is not this fast. When you get to host name this will just be the name of your computer. Again I've called mine Home Assistant. For the domain name you can set this to anything you like or not set it at all. Set the root password for the system Give it a name, give it a username, and set a username password. For partitioning the disk, I've told it to use the entire disk, and I've told it for separate home partition, just so I don't feel like a new user. Finish the partitioning and write it. Confirm. We don't have any additional installation media, so select No. Confirm the country again, and choose which site. My advice is just to pick all the defaults for this. Say so you don't want to participate or do want to participate as you choose. Make sure you remove the GNOME and Debian desktop environment and make sure you add SSH server. Install the Grub bootloader to your primary drive is yes. Choose the only hard drive shown. Confirm installation completed and VirtualBox will reboot. 
Next we want to get the IP address of the system. The command for this is IP space A, press return. It will then give you the networking information with the IP address shown here. Mine ends in 186. Next we want to install sudo. Install the command, use nano to edit the privileges and add your new user that you created before. Exit and save. And now to make things easier, we're going to connect to the computer via SSH. Minimize virtual box and then open the command prompt by searching CMD. Use the command SSH, then your username, then the IP address to connect to the server. This will make it easier for copy and pasting the commands as we go through the process. Sudo into superuser. We're going to run some updates to make sure the operating system has all the latest security fixes. Next we need to install all of the dependencies that Home Assistant will need. I've done this one command at a time but in the description you can simply copy and paste and it will process them all in one go. Next we install docker, then we install home assistant and depack it, then we install home assistant supervised and depack that. Now that's it, done, but we still have some steps to follow. Close down the virtual machine. What we want to do now is make sure that when Windows first boots up it will automatically start the virtual machine. So if you right click in the left hand bar on VirtualBox, select create shortcut on the desktop, then press the Windows key and R. Type in shell colon startup, copy the new shortcut into that folder. This will let Windows know that as soon as it boots up it needs to open that virtual machine. If you have any USB devices that you need to connect to your Home Assistant install like a combi stick or Sonoff Zigbee stick you can do this in the settings menu of the VM under USB and then add USB device. Them devices will show up when they're connected to your system. Ideally a Windows computer that will be running Home Assistant won't be your main computer and it will be sat off to one side somewhere. So you want to make it easy so you can access it remotely. Go into start, go into settings, search for remote desktop settings and make sure enable remote desktop is turned on. This will allow you to connect to the computer using the remote desktop app when you're on your home network from your phone or another computer. You may also want to set the computer up to automatically sign in whenever the computer first starts up. If you go into settings search for sign in options and under require sign in select never. This doesn't always work however and there's a more detailed article of how to make sure the computer will automatically boot up in the description. Another useful thing to do is to clone the entire system now that it's set up. This way if something goes horribly wrong you have a fresh install of Home Assistant ready to go. Just remember that the clone operating system is not set up to auto start inside of Windows. Open your Home Assistant VM or restart your Windows computer. Load the virtual machine. Wait till you get to the command prompt. Make sure you check the IP address. Mine is still 186, no issues. Now we need to open the web browser and open Home Assistant Supervised using the 8123 port on our IP address. Home Assistant can take some time to install. Once it's up and running, the web page will update. Create your user and your password. Set up your basic settings or restore from a backup. And there it is, Home Assistant Supervised running on your Windows machine. Links to all of the websites I use to pull all this information together will be on my website, as well as all of the commands and a full step-by-step -step walkthrough of the process. Thank you for taking the time to check out my guide. Any feedback you want to give regarding this guide, you can hit me up in the comments, head over to my website, or hit me up on social. Hope this video helped, and enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you click skip unattended installation and it will... Bloody dog.
sudden postman turning up at the wrong time. Dave! 